Welcome back. Today we're diving into a crucial topic that every Go developer should master, the context package. Whether you're managing Go routines, handling timeouts, or cancelling operations gracefully, context is your go-to tool. In Go, managing concurrent operations is a breeze with Go routines. However, as your application grows, controlling these Go routines becomes challenging. That's where the context package comes in. It's designed to carry deadlines, cancellation signals, and request scoped values across API boundaries and between Go routines. Now we'll explore using context cancellation in Go to control Go routines. We'll walk through a simple example demonstrating how to manage concurrent operations effectively. We begin by creating a cancelable context using withCancel function. This function returns a context and a cancel function. The context is used to signal when operations should stop, and the cancel function triggers this signal. Next, we launch this Go routine. We use a for loop to simulate continuous work. The select block is key here. It checks for two conditions, whether the context is cancelled or if there's a default action. Then, we check the context's done channel to see if it's been cancelled. If the context is cancelled, the Go routine prints a cancellation message and exits. Otherwise, it continues working. Here, in the default block with this print and sleep, we simulate work. We have another Go routine similar to the first one. Meanwhile, the main function also simulates some work by sleeping for two seconds. During this time, both Go routines are working, printing their status to the console. After the main function completes its work, it calls the cancel function. This signals all Go routines listening to this context that they should stop what they're doing and exit. Next, we give the Go routines a moment to respond to the cancellation and finish cleanly. The program then prints a final message and exits. Let's run this program. Here, we can see both Go routines are working. Then, the context gets cancelled. Due to this, both Go routines return. Now, let us look at an example of handling timeouts in Go using the context package. This code demonstrates how to manage time-sensitive operations in applications. We start by creating a context using with timeout with a timeout of 3 seconds. This function returns a context and a cancel function. The context is our way of setting a time limit on operations, and the cancel function ensures that any resources associated with the context are cleaned up when we're done. We use defer to make sure that the cancel function is called automatically when the main function exits, preventing potential resource leaks. Next, we perform a simulated search operation by calling the search function. This function takes the context and a query string as arguments. It returns the response and error. If an error occurs, such as a timeout, we log the error and exit. If the search is successful, we print the response. The search function is where the magic happens. It simulates a search operation that can be cancelled if it takes too long. It takes the context and the query string. It returns the response and error. We start by creating a channel to receive the response from a slow function. Then. We launch a Go routine that simulates an API call, sending its response back through the channel. The recipe channel receives the response from this function. Let's look at this function. This function simulates a slow API call by sleeping for a random duration between 0 and 5 seconds.
Here, we create a random number generator. Then, we create a random duration up to 5 seconds. Now, we sleep for this duration. This randomness helps simulate real-world scenarios where response times can vary. After sleeping, it returns a message that includes the time it took to complete the call. Let's go back to the search function. After we get the response, we close the response. In the for loop, we use a select block to wait for either the response from the channel or a signal from the context that the operation has timed out. If the response arrives first, we return it. If the context signals that it's done, we return an error indicating that the search was cancelled. Context signals done when the timeout happens that we had set to 3 seconds in the beginning. Let's run the program. We got the result within 3 seconds this time. At this time, the search took more than 3 seconds, and hence the context times out. Similar to timeout, the context package also provides a deadline feature. It is used when we want to stop the execution at a particular time. It works like timeout, except it takes absolute time as deadline. Let's see how we can use this feature. In the timeout example, we will use deadline. We will begin by defining a time as deadline. We have defined this time to be current time plus 3 seconds. Let's replace with timeout function with with deadline. And replace this timeout with deadline. We have now converted this example to use deadline instead of timeout. There is another feature of context, context values. This is a powerful feature that allows you to pass request scoped data throughout your application in a type safe manner. Let's dive into the code to see how it works. In the main function, we create a new context using with value. This function takes the parent context, key, and the value that needs to be stored in the context. We take the background context and store user ID with the value 42. We then pass this context to a function called process request. This function will need access to the user ID stored in the context. In the process request function, we retrieve the user ID from the context using the value method. Value function returns the value of the key in any data type. We then perform a type assertion to ensure that the value is of the correct type, in this case, an integer. This returns the value, and a flag representing the value is found and converted successfully. If the value isn't found, or if the type assertion fails, the function prints an error message and exits. Otherwise, it continues processing. Here, we added a print showing user ID. After processing the request, we pass the context to another function, further processing. This function simulates further work down the call chain that also requires access to the user ID. Again, we extract the user ID from the context using the same key and type assertion. Here we added a print to show the user ID. This pattern allows us to pass request scoped data through different parts of your application without having to explicitly pass it as a parameter. When we run the code, you'll see that both process request and further processing functions are able to access the user ID stored in the context. This demonstrates how context values can be used to pass important data across your application seamlessly. Mastering context in Go will greatly improve your ability to write efficient, responsive, and maintainable code. 
As you continue to explore concurrency in Go, keep these practices in mind and your applications will be ready to handle the complexities of real-world scenarios. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more Go programming tutorials. And as always, happy coding!